Well, hello there, fellow geeks and geekettes, and welcome to another video. Today I would like to talk about poor, poor stars in Hollywood being forced to bow down to the gods of inclusion and representation, and how Andy Serkis has clearly become a victim of his own joke. Um, so, let us dive into the article first, and then let us explain what really happened in my opinion. So Andy Serkis claims Venom Let There Be Carnage features Venom's LGBTQIA coming out party. Uh, just first, wouldn't it be better to include the entire bloody alphabet already? That would be much easier. Alright, Venom Let There Be Carnage director Andy Serkis recently claimed that the upcoming film features and la 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 coming out party for Venom. Serkis spoke with the Uprox to promote the upcoming film where he discussed a scene in the film where Venom goes to a rave. The director explained, It was originally going to be a carnival of, of the damned, and it ended up being Tom had got to know Little Sims, who's a brilliant rapper and also stars in the movie, and she actually had, a, had made a song, unbeknownst to her, called Venom, that connected very much with the first movie. And so Tom got in touch with her, and that song became sort of the focus. Well, Tom and co-writer Kelly Marcel were always about Venom coming out and going to a party that was a very sort of a of an AG, LGB, la, 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 kind of festival, really, I'd call it. And so this is his coming out party, basically. This is Venom's coming out party, he added. Uprox writer Mike Ryan then pressed Circus asking, well, like, actually coming out because it's very interesting. Circus responded, well, coming out, being out. Ryan then countered, well, you just compared it to LGBTQIA. That's very interesting. Circus then explained, well, what is interesting is that it's just like, here's a kind of, he says in the movie, we must stop this cruel treatment of aliens, he said, you know, we all live on this ball of rock, you know, and so he inadvertently becomes a kind of, he's speaking for the other, he's speaking for freedom of the other. Ryan then stated, and it's very obvious that Eddie and Venom are in love, like we all know that, they are, they are in love. Circus confirmed. Absolutely, they do have each other, and that's the kind of the cent and that's uh, the kind of the center of the movie is that love affair, that central love affair. In the production notes for the film supplied by Sony Pictures, Circus previously claimed the film is a love story, but not the love story you might think. He explained in the notes, it's very much about the extraordinary relationship between symbiote and host. Any love affair has its, has its pitfalls, its high points and low points. Venom and Eddie's relationship absolutely causes problems and stress, and, and they have a near hatred for each other. But they have to be with each other, they can't live without each other. That's companionship, love, the things that relationships are really about, he asserted. Serkis would further describe the relationship between Eddie and Venom, saying, It's Jekyll and Hyde. Eddie is rather arrogant, thinking life owes him a favor. Venom is the complete opposite, unfiltered and speaking his mind, mind totally. He continued, and they're trapped together. After meeting in the first movie, they've now got the seven-year itch. They've had enough of each other and can't wait to be apart, and so on and so forth. Listen, people. Today's world is crippled in one way. Everything needs to be gay. Everything needs to be gender fluid. Everything needs to be this or that. This is about Eddie Brock and the symbiote, Venom, and them not being able to be separated. Quite obviously, they are going to get on each other's nerves. But we know from the previous film that they have become very close friends and that the relationship is quite advantageous for both of them. Now, I'm only and exclusively talking about the movies. Of course, most of you don't know the original material. Most of you haven't been there when Venom started coming out in the 90s, his own series, because he became a very popular v uh, villain in the Spider-Man comic books. So, obviously, if somebody is in Hollywood, he and the circus needs to bow to the, bow to the gods of inclusion and representation. He needs to include the gay stuff. He needs to include the gender stuff. Because it's 
compulsory in today's Hollywood. Even if he had to go as far as making the fucking Venom gay. So, he jokingly said something <laughs> here in the very first paragraph of uh, the interview and then he was ready to move on. He was ready to take more questions. But the fucking interviewer, the bloody retard, the lefty twat, pushed him, <laughs> quite obviously, so that Andy Serkis had to continue talking about the bloody nonsense and he got tangled in it. So, I mean, if you want to make Venom gay, do so. I don't fucking give a fuck, you idiots. I don't give a flying toss about that. If I want to enjoy a good Venom story, I will read the stories from the 90s. I will read the comic books or rewatch the first film. But really, why should I? Why should I waste my time with modern entertainment that does not focus on good storytelling in the first place, but on constructed bullshit like being gender fluid or LGBTQ and all the other fucking letters of the alphabet. So yeah, uh, that's money saved for me. I shall not watch this movie in cinemas and I, I was quite ready to go to see it, you know, after two years going to cinema just for the experience. But no, 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 thank you very much indeed. Um, yeah, that will be all. Thank you very much for watching and uh, let me know what you think about this. Friends, bye.